Let's take a look at our top story this hour. NASA has successfully launched its ninth Mars rover from the Cape Canaveral space station in Florida, marking NASA's third mission to the Red Planet this month. With eight successful Mars landings, NASA is upping the ante with the spacecraft called Perseverance. NASA wants to be first to demonstrate powered flight in Mars in the thin atmosphere. But there is a small twist to NASA's plans. The newest rover is taking a helicopter along for an otherworldly test flight. flight. This small helicopter on your screen is the first pressure. aircraft to fly on the red planet. The four-pound helicopter is traveling to Mars, clutching the rover's belly. A few months after touchdown, the helicopter called Ingenuity will attempt to fly solo. Once dropping onto the Martian surface, Ingenuity will start out like a baby bird. It will try to go a little higher and a little farther with each attempt. Now this is the third and final mission to Mars after the UAE's Hope Orbiter and China's Orbiter Rover combo. And like all other spacecraft, Perseverance should reach the Red Planet next February after a journey spanning seven months and more than 300 million miles. Now, we are being joined by Dr. Amitabha Ghosh from Washington, D.C. Dr. Ghosh is a space scientist who has been working on the NASA Mars mission for the past 15 years. Good evening and thank you for being with us. Thank you. Now, the ninth successful launch and what makes this mission special is that the Perseverance rover introduces a drill that can collect core samples and keep them aside in a, a cache on the surface of Mars. So what is your question? So what makes this uh, mission special with the Perseverance rover? Right. So it's not just the cache or the helicopter. I, I think you have to look at the entire rover in its entirety. So the other things which are very interesting is that we will um, manufacture molecular oxygen from carbon dioxide on Mars. It's an incredible thing. So if you know, imagine if humans were to go from Earth to Mars, uh, and they had to carry all the oxygen for, for their six-month uh, journey and their six-month journey back and three-month stay, um, that would make it very un uneconomical. So it is very important that we learn how to utilize the resources on Mars to live on Mars for any venture, uh, a human mission to be, uh, to be uh, realistic. So that's a very important step, Moxie. Uh, we're sending a miniature version of that instrument. Um, if, if it is successful, then subsequently we can send something which can uh, scale up the oxygen production rate per day by 100, 100 times. Uh, the other uh, interesting things that this rover will do is, uh, uh, if you remember, there's another rover called Curiosity, which is uh, on the surface of Mars right now. One of the very interesting discoveries of Curiosity was the discovery of organic compounds. So, so you know, if you're looking for fossils on Mars, preserving fossils on Mars may be very difficult. But we all know that humans and all life on Earth require carbon. So if you, and not just carbon, they are made up of carbon compounds. So if you were to find carbon on um um, uh, on Mars, specifically organic compounds, then it might be telling us something. So C Curiosity did find um, organic compounds. Um, so Perseverance will look for other clues of past life on Mars. Um, so it's a whole package. Yes, go ahead. Right. And, and Doctor, you have been working on this mission for many years. Uh, with this mission, it, it really lays a lot of groundwork in gathering knowledge and, and practicing the technologies to work towards future human expeditions to Mars. Right, it does. So I started working in this business. The first rover on Mars was in 97 with the Mars Pathfinder mission. So since that time, you know, so a rover mission was something very new. Nobody thought it would be workable. Nobody knew the advantages of that. And now we are at a stage where we know after three generations of rover, this is the fourth generation, uh, we know a lot about Mars that we did not know at that time. 
and we are getting ready for that stage where scientific discovery will ultimately give way to logistics and finding of um, deposits on Mars for water and then finding of technologies which will feasibly extract this deposit in a cost-effective manner so that humans can use it. So there's a transition going on uh, in the next 10 years which will completely um, change the way we look at Mars and make it a more friendly and not hostile place that it is perceived to be. And uh, just, you did mention it earlier, just how important is this next step um, of having the, the helicopter uh, ingenuity attempting its solo flight on Mars for the long-term effort of robotic exploration? So it is, I wouldn't say it is a critical path. So what could a helicopter do? So we have much bigger problems regarding, say, a human mission to Mars. A helicopter would help maybe in planning the route of the rover, Maybe it will help planning some, um, uh, getting some rocks from a place where a rover cannot uh, cannot reach. But other than that, um, I think you have also have to remember that this is a technology demonstration mission. It's not a core instrument per se. So this is kind of NASA's may, way of shipping at the problem to see whether in this very rarefied atmosphere of Mars, there is uh, the, uh, 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 a helicopter flight or a drone flight, you can say, is even feasible. So so while it's very exciting to talk about a helicopter, the more pressing thing on Mars is where is the water? Can you extract that in a, in a um, cost-effective way for use? Is there life evidence of life on Mars? If yes, what do you look for? Is there fossils on Mars? So there are very pressing scientific questions that this mission will try to uh, tackle. And how far away are you from the future mission that could potentially return the uh, cached samples to Earth for, for study? So this will happen maybe at the end of this decade. And um, it will maybe be a NASA mission. Maybe it will be a European Union mission. Um, so the details are to be worked out and the budget is to be worked out. Um, it, it is beyond what we say the budget cycle. So it's not going to happen in the next two, three years. Uh, the near-term goal for NASA is to, uh, is to land human astronauts on uh, the moon by 2024. Um, so while this is very important, it, it will happen probably towards the end of the decade. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us. That is Dr. Amitabha Gosh, bringing us the latest there from NASA's successful launch.